<clears throat> Hello, Investing Putts back with you again for our weekly update. Um, after a tough April, I finally caught a lucky break. Uh, Weight Watchers, which has been one of my problem holdings, had a massive spike after its Q1 2021 earnings report. So here's a plot of my portfolio's performance against the SPY and against a 60-40 SPY TLT split. Um, last week I fell behind the virtual SPY portfolio and even fell briefly below the SPY bond mix. However, the portfolio was up 6.2% last week, mainly due to Weight Watchers' crazy earnings performance. Um, since I started trading in early January, I'm up 10.7%. Uh, that's 25.7% annualized, which would be fantastic if I could keep it up. Um, but you know, with a single stock risk, there's going to be some ups and downs. So I'll have to I'll have to reevaluate when I, when I, if I want to hold on to Weight Watchers or not. Here's a list of my current holdings. Um, this is unchanged. I've been trading the uh, I'm trading the uh, poor man's covered call on, on most of these stocks, meaning that I have a bullish uh, medium term outlook. Um, I made a bearish call on the oil and gas sector last month, but I got burned by that. Uh, oil and gas is now strongly reversing out of that bearish trend. Um, I've switched back to the poor man's covered call on SLB, and I'll probably do the same on, on Oxy, but I'm going to wait for earnings on, on May 10th. Uh, currently, I have an earnings iron, iron condor on uh, Oxy. I'm also trading neutral defined risk strategies like iron condors and credit spreads on U.S. Steel. I've done really well on U.S. Steel, as I mentioned last week, but I'm currently setting at max loss on a call spread, but I have about seven days to expiration, so uh, hopefully it turns around. Weight Watchers has been in, a, in, a, in an upward trend for seven months, but it's been pretty volatile, which is why the options premiums are so good, and that's why I'm in there in the first place. Um, I've been trading the wheel since February, but I switched to the uh, poor man's covered call on April 21st. Uh, since I bought the $20 strike leap, the stock went against me, and it even briefly uh, went below the 200-day moving average, which is the red curve, before jumping about 40% in two days after earnings. I'd been selling uh, covered calls against this leap, and I bought it back the day before earnings for just a you know, 10 cents or something. And before I could even re-enter that covered call, I waited to the next day. And the next day on earnings, the stock went up 25% and another 10% the next day. So I just rode the wave with my long call and uh, really caught a lucky break on that one. So hooray for me. Here's a performance of the Weight Watchers stock in blue versus uh, my position in red. The poor man's covered call really amplifies the uh, cash on cash return or decline relative to simply owning the stock. So it's nice for preserving buying power, but you know, be warned if everything goes against you, you can you can lose a lot more on a relative basis with a, the poor man's covered call. So oil and gas had a great run from October to March. Um, Oxy and SLB nearly doubled in that time. But in March, however, uh, oil and gas went strongly bearish and broke, you know, broke definitively below the 50-day moving average. Uh, I'm long-term bullish in oil, but in short term, I went uh, bearish on Oxy and SLB with uh, the poor man's covered put. And both these positions went strongly against me. Um, so I'm back in the poor man's covered call on Schlumberger, and we'll probably do the same on Oxy after they report earnings on, on May 10th. Um, you know, the cost basis is still pretty discounted relative to the peak in March, so I'm okay re-entering the, uh, the bullish side on these stocks at these, at these prices. Um, so that's all I have for the update. Uh, I'm going to make another video today about, about hedging, um, so uh, stay tuned for that, and would love to hear your comments and, and feedback in the comment section. See you next time.